Hello and welcome to Cisco ASA Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from SoundTraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington based publisher of learning resources and provider of accelerated training for IT professionals. This time we're going to do configuring static NAT. This is based on ASA software version 9.01. It should apply to any uh, software version 8.3 or later. If you're using something prior to 8.3, the procedures are different and what I'm going to show you will not apply. This is based on my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance. It's not required for following along, but if you'd like to get a copy, I'd love for you to have one, and it's available from Amazon and other online resellers. Here are the prerequisites. For this lesson, you'll need the following administrative access to a Cisco ASA security appliance and familiarity with Cisco CLI commands. This is not really a beginner's level uh, video, although if you are a beginner, you could certainly uh, give it a try, but you really need to have some familiarity with the Cisco command line commands. The equipment software requirements. You'll need one Cisco ASA security appliance. I used a Cisco ASA 5505, but this should apply to pretty much any of the ASA uh, line of appliances. You'll also need a computer for your management workstation connected to the ASA's outside interface, a web server connected to the ASA's inside interface, a console cable, and perhaps a USB to serial adapter if your uh, management workstation doesn't have a serial port. And you'll need terminal emulation software such as PuTTY, which is what I'm using, but if you have something else you prefer, then certainly that will work just as well. Here's the diagram, and as you can see, it's pretty simple. We have an external host, which you would find typically on a public registered IP address, not the RFC 1918 private address that I'm using here, but this is just for demonstration. It's connected to the outside interface on the ASA security appliance, and then you'll have an internal web server connected to the inside interface, and we'll connect by using the outside interface's address, which will be forwarded via a static NAT to the internal web server. There's three steps for configuring static NAT. Here they are. The first one is to create a network object. And within this network object, you'll identify the internal host, which is the web server, and you'll create a static NAT statement to tell the ASA to forward port 80 traffic from the outside interface to the web server on the inside. You'll build an access control list, which will allow the traffic flow to go against the security levels on the ASA, and then you'll apply the access control list to the outside interface. So it's really fairly simple. Uh, let's go ahead and, and go through the demonstration so you can see what I mean. First of all, the disclaimer, this video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer, no guarantees whatsoever. Do not attempt these procedures on a production firewall without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. These procedures may alter your security appliance's existing configuration and performing these procedures may open your security appliance and internal servers to the public internet and subject your network to attack. So make sure you have current backups and take precautions including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data, which, as I mentioned frequently in these videos, is just a really good idea anyway, right? So we're in the command line interface for the ASA, and let's go into configuration mode with the command configure terminal. We'll abbreviate it with the abbreviation conf space t, that's short for configure terminal. And now we're going to create the network object. So object, network, and then we give it some name. And I like to use really descriptive names, even though it's a bit of a pain to type initially, but that way later on when you're looking at the configuration, you can tell at a glance what's going on. So we're going to call this one outside underscore two underscore inside underscore web underscore server. And we'll hit enter, and you'll see that the prompt changes now. We're in network object configuration mode. Let's identify the host, and the host that we're going to identify is the actual web server. So host 192.168.102.5. And this, if, if you're using your own addresses, obviously it's whatever address you've assigned to the inside host that's running the web server. Now let's do the NAT statement. So we're going to do NAT inside outside static as opposed to dynamic because this is one-to-one -one network address translation as opposed to port address translation. And let's specify interface. This simply tells the appliance to use whatever address is on the outside interface. So whatever address is there, that's what it's going to use for the translation. You could explicitly provide the address, but it's not necessary. Now we need to identify the service type. That's the port number that is going to be forwarded. So we'll say service. TCP 
and the originating port number, which is typically going to be 80 for a web server, and the destination port number, which would also typically be 80 for a web server. So that's all you need to do for the network object. Now we need to create the access control list to permit the traffic flows to go against the security levels. So um, access list. And again, we'll use a descriptive name for it. So outside to web server. Another way of doing the same thing that I did before, just left the underscores out. Maybe not quite as easy to read, but maybe a little easier to type. It's just I'm just showing you different ways of doing it. And then we're going to permit the traffic flow of TCP traffic from any source going to the host at 192.168.102.5 as long as it's equal to World Wide Web traffic or port 80. And we could say either www or 80. Either one works. And now we need to apply the access list to an interface. So we'll use the command access hyphen group. We need to specify the access list by the same name that we used before. So we'll say outside to web server inbound traffic coming into the interface named outside. And now if we've done it right, it should work. So let's open up a browser and see what happens. So here's our browser. Let's put in the IP address of the outside interface on the Cisco ASA security appliance, which is 192.168.1.9. And let's see what happens. And there it is. So this particular website, as you can see, it's set up to identify the source IP address, which is the address of my management workstation. But this is the web server running on the inside host on the inside of the firewall, and it is translating 192.168.1.9, the outside address of the firewall, to the IP address on the inside network of the web server, which is 192.168.102.5. So it's really pretty straightforward. I've got a post that describes these steps in detail on my blog. Uh, other resources include the blog at soundtraining.net slash blog, as well as our website, soundtraining.net. You can subscribe to our newsletter at soundtraining.net slash newsletter. Like us on Facebook. Please like us on Facebook at soundtraining.net slash Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Google+. Plus. If you'd like more videos, we've got plenty of them, and we're adding new ones pretty much every week, sometimes more than one a week, sometimes not quite that many, but I try to add at least one a week at soundtraining.net slash videos, our video channel, and the companion book is available at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. It is the Accidental Administrator Cisco ASA Security Appliance, a step-by-step -step configuration guide. Well, I hope it's been helpful for soundtraining.net. I'm Don Crawley. We'll see you next time.